This is Eugene Counter Robert, a professor here at Northwestern University. My paper talks about the Sosa case which was the Supreme Court's principal holding on the Alien Tort Statute. In that case, the, the court said that you can, the uh, federal courts can recognize substantive causes of action under the Alien Tort Statute, but only if they are universally accepted, concrete, and really well-defined, and generally accepted. And where did it get this idea from? It said it got it from trying to reconstruct Congress's intent when Congress passed this in 1790. So because there hadn't been any cases under it for 190 years and there's no legislative history, it was kind of a hypothetical reconstruction, but they said this is what Congress must have wanted to happen under this, only things that are universally accepted. Now, leave that aside for a second. Uh, a large subset of, you know, of uh, ATS cases involve universal jurisdiction. What universal jurisdiction means, it's when a, a case is heard that has no connection to the forum. So, for example, the classic uh, ATS case of Thalardiga was Paraguayans suing other Paraguayans for things that happened in Paraguay. And they chose America as the logical place to, to bring these suits. So when an uh, American court hears cases with, with no nexus with America, that's called universal jurisdiction. So the, this, this raises a question. What basis does Congress have to legislate about things that have no connection with America? So if things happen in foreign countries but maybe have some economic effect in America, if they involve American corporations or uh, corporations with a significant presence in America, you might think that Congress's power to regulate foreign commerce is involved. But if it's truly a universal jurisdiction case, as many of these international, cri uh, in international human rights cases are, then the question is where does Congress get the power to regulate? Congress is, of course, a government, uh, is a uh, legislature of limited powers. It has to have express authorization from Article I to legislate. Now, domestically, Article I goes pretty broadly. It can legislate over most things. But that doesn't mean that it's a general legislature, legislature for the world. Indeed, if you think it's a government of limited powers, you'd be surprised if it has general legislative competence over the world. So the ATS is an exercise of a particular constitutional power, the power to define and punish offenses against the law of nations. And if, the, if it is a universal jurisdiction exercise, then it would have to be because that is consistent with the uh, define and punish power. What would that mean? So if the power, if it comes from Congress's power to define and punish offenses against the law of nations, that means that the offenses against the law of nations has to already include universal jurisdiction. To put it simply, Congress can only allow the courts to implement universal jurisdiction over that subset of international wrongs which are universally cognizable. And this is not only because, as Sosa says, that's what Congress probably meant in 1790, it's not just a matter of statutory interpretation and congressional intent. It's actually a fundamental constitutional point. Congress has no power even initially to authorize the courts to create causes of action. Congress itself could not create causes of action for things which are not well recognized uh, as universal jurisdiction offenses. Now, what's that mean practically? Practically speaking, that means we need to take an even stricter look at potential ATS causes of action than you might think from SOSA. You apply the SOSA standard, but not just as a statutory standard of interpretation, but as a standard of constitutional interpretation. And a basic principle of constitutional interpretation is if there's any doubt, you resolve it in a way that would not raise constitutional difficulties. So if there's any uncertainty whether something is universally accepted as a universal norm in a case that has no nexus with the United States, a court should and would have to uh, not entertain that claim.